Japan, the proverbial land of cherry blossoms, has also devoted many of its precious acres to the cultivation of tulips. And were it not for the daughters of Nippon, who lend native atmosphere to this setting, one might think it was in Holland, so cleverly have the Japanese emulated the Dutch in the art of growing tulips. One of the favorite outdoor recreations of the Japanese people is known as flower viewing, and it provides an incentive for long walks through the parks and the country, where nature and all the ramifications of her floral beauty is silently worshipped. The whole of Japan may be described as one great natural garden in which are found smaller gardens, public and private, designed to produce exquisite effects. In order to comprehend and appreciate the beauty of a Japanese garden from a native point of view, it is necessary to understand the meaning of stones. Unless we can feel that stones have character, much of the artistic meaning of a Japanese garden is lost to us. Buddhist monks who first brought the art of landscape gardening to Japan believed it was possible to express moral lessons in the design of a garden. Consequently, gardens are often contrived according to the character of the owner, so that the typical Japanese garden expresses both the mood of nature and the mood of man. Love of beauty and love of nature are undoubtedly the heritage of the humblest Japanese. And every detail in their woods and gardens is an illustration of art concealing art. Although the Japanese hold all the seasonal wonders of nature's floral pageant in high esteem, it is the cherry blossom season that captivates their hearts and inspires them with a fervor that has become their natural heritage. No finer tribute has been given to women than that which was written by the Japanese author who said, Woman is our immediate inspiration in our love of all beauty. For us, her image blends with all the loveliness of nature. She is an inseparable part of the bloom of earth and the sweet vocal sister of its loveliest of blossoms. The response of our poets to her beauty is also akin to their joy in the mute but vivid appeal of the flowers and in the changing harmonies of the year. In the private life of a Japanese lady, nothing is of greater importance than the dressing of her hair, and it is a rare privilege to see how it is done. The professional hairdresser who usually calls at the homes of the wealthier class ladies first sends her apprentice to wash the hair and perfume it. Immediately after which, she herself arrives, and the more intricate procedure begins. From the time she is a child, the dressing of a Japanese lady's hair passes through a series of styles, each of which reveals the proximity of her age, her social status, 
and whether she is married or single or a widow. It requires from one to two hours to complete this hairdressing in all its ramifications, and this very formal procedure takes place every third or fourth day, so that no small amount of the wealthier Japanese lady's time is spent with her hairdressing. It is practically impossible for the Japanese lady to dress her own hair in the traditional manner of her country, and the same is true of her kimono dressing, which also necessitates professional assistance as each color, fold, and cord of this garment signifies something of importance. or sash which is used to hold the kimono together is the pride of the well-dressed lady of Japan and invariably it is an indication of her wealth. The designs on the obi are often brocaded with gold thread and in rare instances obis have been sprinkled with jewels. Consequently they range in values from a few yen to several thousand yen. Each Japanese lady accumulates a great number of obis as they represent the proudest possession of her wardrobe. And now that her hair has been dressed and her kimono done, she may go forth with her friends, adding a natural loveliness to the colorful scenes in which she moves. For nowhere in this world do we find human beings more closely allied with the beauty of nature than the ladies of Japan. And it is here in this oriental garden of Eden that we say farewell to floral Japan. Thank you.